PT help retell lecture and summarize spoken text test 9 lecture 1 This is the most remote continent on earth it looks pristine but today there's new evidence that microplastics are now reaching even these waters and perhaps more disturbingly there is also pollution from airborne chemicals in freshly fallen snow We'll put it over the side we were with scientists on board a Greenpeace ship in January as they began testing waters off the Antarctic Peninsula. Very little data exists. It's a question of picking a tiny bit of the Southern Ocean and lowering in a manta, a trawling device. Any microplastics should find their way into the net. The team searched some of the most isolated places in the planet. They also hunted for pollution on land, gathering samples of freshly fallen snow. We didn't know it at the time, but even here, deposited either as a gas or in dust, were molecules of man-made chemicals. The samples of the three-month-long expedition were brought to this laboratory in Exeter. The majority were found to be contaminated. What we're finding is that in almost uh, all of the samples of water we collected, uh, we find tiny pieces of, of microplastics. Maybe only a, a few fragments or fibres in, in every litre of water, but given that this is really the end of the Earth, uh, it's remarkable once again that we're finding microplastics almost wherever we look. This will only add to the growing calls for something to be done about plastic before more of it reaches the end of the earth. PTE help. Test 9. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Sample answer from PTE help. Scientists researched in the most remote continent of our planet, Antarctic Peninsula, that looks pristine, but unfortunately, it contains waters, polluted with microplastics. Team searched hunted for the samples on land in freshly fallen snow and water. It has been found from the specimens in the laboratory that gas and dust molecules of man-made chemicals are contaminating these consistently, which signals the end of the earth. Therefore, there is something serious to be done, before we come to an end of the earth with a plastic planet. PT help, retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Test 9. Lecture 2. All we're trying to do when we build robots is to get those skills and perceptions and mechanical designs into machines, into robots. I think our long-term goal is to do this, to build robots that have the functional levels of performance that are equal to or greater than people and animals. 
I don't mean that they have to work the way people and animals work or that they have to look like them, just at the level of performance in terms of mobility, the ability to move around in the world, dexterity, the ability to use our hands. Look, I'm handling this device, I can rotate it around, I'm sensing. There's a remarkable amount going on that we make seem so easy. And then perception. I mean, here's a room with 200 people just within this uh, theater, and I can look and see every one of you. Uh, I can do it while I'm moving. It's totally remarkable, yet we can all do it and we don't think about it. We didn't have to be specially trained. Yet those are the skills that we're trying to put into our robots. PTE help. Test 9. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Sample answer from PTE help. The robotics is now looked for to be mechanically designed, containing various humans or animals competencies. These are mobility, dexterity, perception, and intelligence. The scientists are designing these remarkable functional level performances in these machines that are either equal to, or greater than a man. For example, human beings need not to be specially trained to use the movements of hands, to feel sensations, or to think about anything, and this is what the future of the robotics, is being assumed for. PT help, retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Test 9. Lecture 3. In biology, the theory of evolution doesn't tell us exactly how life began on Earth, but it helps us understand how life, once it came into existence, diversified into the many incredible forms we see now and in the fossil record. It also helps us make sense of the way in which modern creatures continue to adapt and change today. In biology, evolution can be defined as any change in the heritable traits those are physical traits like fur color in mice, spots on the wings of butterflies, or instinctive behaviors like the way that dogs greet their friends with a sniff, within a population across generations. This definition can be a bit confusing, so let's see how it works. All healthy living things from single-celled amoebas to flowers to dolphins are capable of reproduction. We have children we make copies of ourselves. We do this by duplicating our DNA and passing that DNA on to future generations. DNA is a chain-like chemical stored inside each one of your cells which tells them how to grow and function. Your DNA contains coded information on how to build you. The information in your DNA is different than that of, say, a daffodil's DNA, which is why you look and function differently than a daffodil. The information in your DNA is slightly different than that of Elvis Presley, which is one of many reasons you don't look or act quite like he did.
PTE help. Test 9. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Sample answer from PTE help. The biological theory of evolution doesn't tell us about the beginning of the life on the earth, rather it tells us how we came into existence, diversity in the fossil records, as well as, the way we adapt the changes. It is also a bit confusing to comprehend any change in heritable traits or instinct behavior. However, all healthy living things are capable to reproduce. It is done by duplicating our DNA, and the chain of chemicals, programs our functions, and appearance, we possess.